Welcome back. My second guest today is Dr. Dennis Truax. He is the James T. White Endowed Chair and the head of our Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. Dennis, it's great to see you today. Pleasure to be with you, James. Thank you for the invitation. You're very welcome. Now, I've, I've seen you talk several times to prospective high school students about mm -hmm. coming to Mississippi State and studying civil and environmental engineering. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I've always noticed is the passion <laughs> that you have when you're talking about well, you. your, your field of, of study. Tell me, what is it that really got you passionate about civil engineering? You know, what was it that really captured your imagination that made you feel like this was something that you really wanted to devote your life to? Um, a good observation, and, and it's been uh, pointed out to me on several occasions that uh, the passion that seems to come, and, and, and the truth is that if you look at what civil engineers do, what we do in, in general, and I'm with my engineering background focused in environmental and water resources, uh, that's just one of the many areas that, that we do this. Our profession uh, is focused on making things better for people. Uh, it's making a difference. So uh, what we end up doing is uh, a lot of times doing the things people take for granted. We sometimes frame it uh, in the various organizations as really designing, planning, building a quality of life that, that uh, the people in our communities want. That difference comes by providing clean water, sustain sustainable infrastructure, uh, roads, highways, bridges, rail, uh, air systems, clean water, clean, uh, 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 clean wastewater. And um, so that passion comes from not necessarily being able to do it, but seeing what the result is. As you know that I've been involved in Africa with the college's Engineers Without Borders chapter. And as I was accounting earlier, uh, it's, it's really uh, uh, rewarding to see how simply putting in something as simple as a hand pump and a well and a sustainable water, suppl uh, water supply for a year-round uh, clean water source, how that can change a community. Uh, we take it for granted. We, we've grown up with that. Uh, uh, we drank water out of the garden hose when we played as kids and, and, and water was always abundant and clean and safe. But over there uh, and here too, uh, providing that water changes lives. People. Uh, become more empowered, uh, their health is better, uh, their economic growth is better, uh, and it, it, it really is a life-changing result. And we have that uh, every day as a civil or environmental engineer. I'm, I'm glad you brought up the Engineers Without Borders. Um, I know that the, uh, the students have won a, a number of national awards, some very prestigious awards, and you take a group of students to Africa every summer. We do. Part of that. What, what are some of the things that the students get to do while, <coughs> while they're over there? Well, uh, again, always looking for opportunities. The original mission of the five-year project was to uh, put in sustainable drinking water, potable water. Not for agriculture so much as just to make sure people had good water to drink, clean water to, to cook with, to, to some degree bathing. Um, while we were there, uh, uh, we found that there were a number of opportunities for the students to get involved in. So in addition to helping uh, uh, drill the, the borehole, uh, install the well casing, place the hand pump, do the water quality testing, and, and periodically checking and ensuring that the wells being, uh, the pumps are being maintained, that the water so supply remains safe. Uh, one activity we got involved with was uh, a youth soccer program. And we took balls over and, and played with the students. Well, the students played with the students. And, and we engaged them in uh, recreational activities. Uh, we've taken materials over and engaged in a, a hygiene program that our NGO works with and, and teaching individuals about uh, the importance of, of proper hygiene. Uh, we, uh, uh, one of the traditions over there is that when we put in a well, uh, they actually will kill the fatted goat. 
and, and have a celebration. And in a few occasions, we'd get there, work way into the night, and they would just give us the goat and tell us to go home and kill it ourselves. And instead of killing the goat, we started an animal husbandry progr uh, program, which is made up mostly of, of goats and chickens, uh, again, all gifts. And we've, we've farmed those out and loaned those out to individuals in the communities that we work in to develop those programs. So it sounds like you're doing a lot more than just engineering when you when you go to Africa? Well, we do. Uh, though the uh, Engineers Without Borders chapter is focused on uh, the water supply piece, it is uh, a multidisciplinary team. We have chemical engineers, industrial engineers, civil engineers involved in this uh, activity. And much like civil and environmental engineering, we're engaged in people's lives making a difference. And it's not just one difference. It's a, it's a more holistic impact that we have. Okay, that, I mean, that sounds great. Now, and that's why the passion. Bringing it full circle yeah. there for yes. us. Um, so just quickly, mm -hmm. for those students that don't want to go to Africa or may not be able to go to Africa, what are some of the things that they might be able to do here at Mississippi State in civil engineering? Uh, that's Very awesome. briefly. Uh, that's a difficult part. The easiest part is to, is to come up with a quick, couple quick examples. Uh, within the, de the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, we have a number of faculty that are engaged with students as part of a, an active learning program. Uh, we'll take undergraduate students into the lab, uh, particularly during their junior and senior year once they've mastered the fundamental engineering, and they may be working on the next generation of concrete that'll be used. And in fact, we're engaged in the design of a concrete that'll be used in the new baseball stadium expansion. Uh, or they may be involved in designing the next generation of asphalt for, for roadways here in the state or in, in the south. Or they may be working on a biological fuel cell and trying to close the loop and advance the next generation of biodiesel, biofuels uh, by treating wastewater, reclaiming energy, and, and in the same sense generating a renewable energy source. That sounds like there's a lot of great things going on. There are. And unfortunately that's all we have time for today. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we hope you will join us again next time. Remember, you can always follow us on social media to find out all the latest things happening in the Bagley College of Engineering. <laughs>